This question goes to John, a little bit different. Do you guys ever write your music that's influenced off of a video game? Because if not, you should. Uh, I did one time. Um, I let a buddy of mine, I saw the band read the lyrics. Uh-huh. Was like, no, you should, you should write about video games. You need to focus on real-time stuff. And I'm like, but I like it. And he's like, I don't. And I was like, okay, well, I don't do it anymore. <laughs> I, think, I, know, I, I think I think Jordan and Craig would agree that writing music because obviously you guys are all video gamers. I like ever 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 since sixty four stopped and it came like it was one six. What, what was after Nintendo sixty four? Nintendo Cube or something? The Game Cube. Cube. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I didn't play that, and I didn't I didn't play like there's like Nintendo Switch now, and there's all these like Playstations and Xboxes, and I never really got the only game I played on Xbox was like Guitar Hero. And that's like I'll the only game the I played. <laughs> yeah, you know what sucked? You know what sucked was that? What was that other game called? Where you actually had the drum set, Garage Band, or uh, yeah, it was yeah. Rock Band. And I'm, Rock Band. And I'm a drummer, and I could not drum on Rock Band. That is if it's not... any console. What? I was gonna say if it's any consolation, I tried playing Rocksmith, um, which is the one where you actually use like a real guitar as a controller. I couldn't play like anything on that. <laughs> I was selling everything on Rookie. <laughs> is it supposed to teach you how to play guitar in real life? Yeah, and I was like, here I am, like this many years in the band, and I'm like failing every song on Rookie. I can barely play like Smoke on the Water. John, John, <laughs> you, you need to kick him out of the band. That's what you need to do. <laughs> uh, you're allowed to come back when you can beat uh, uh, Highway to Hell on Rocksmith, okay? <laughs> Until then, you're out. <laughs> What 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 is the band's writing process? Um, so typically, what happens is is me and Jordan, uh, at least historically, we've got Jared in the band now, so we've got like another viewpoint coming in. But historically, Jordan and I have usually been the ones to kind of uh, write the bones of the songs, uh, just kind of get the ideas, play around with them, try to link things together, figure out what sounds good together, uh, and then once we've got you know a skeleton for a song. John comes in with Brandon and, you know, Brandon adds uh, a lot of melodic elements and things like that. John comes in, writes the lyrics. Uh, sometimes though, he'll write lyrics that like, just, you know, like he'll just have something on his mind, write it out. And then it just happens to fit a song. And, and that's, that's typically what we do. I mean, we, we do try to, you know, go behind everything and make sure that, you know, our lyrics are, are, are good and, everything flows nicely and, and all of that stuff. But I mean, typically for the, the music part of it, the bones of it are me and Jordan uh, with the new album, the new stuff, Jared's contributed a whole lot. So we're actually really excited for everybody to hear the stuff we're going to record this year. Awesome. Um, and like I said, Brandon is, is right in the middle of it too, man. Brandon has been my bass guy for, Oh shit. Probably 15 years now. Like I've, I've played it's music with Brandon for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. That's a long time. <laughs> me, and, me and Brandon met uh, in high school. He's he's just a year or two older than I am, and we were the two metalhead kids that would always come to school and like crack the filth shirts and shit. So uh, we hit it off pretty early. And Brandon has been in other bands with me throughout the years, and uh, he's always been a part of it. But <laughs> so like so like in high school, where you live, uh, where you do high school is in Kentucky, right? Yeah. Was, is there a lot of metalheads that went to your high school? Was it mostly just like country music type people? Man, there were about five kids that I can think of that were completely cool with what we listened to and what we liked. Every other it was everybody we hung out with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was our our small group of friends would get into the stuff we listened to. Uh, everybody else that went to school with us thought we were fucking crazy. They thought that we were, you know. <laughs> Uh, into some weird shit or something. I don't. <laughs> that is uh, so. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, I can actually, go ahead. I can actually recall a situation that I was just talking about recently. Is uh, you know during uh, when there were all the school shootings and stuff was going on. You know our teachers, a lot of people at the school, they was really strict on a lot of people who dress different. You know, so if you wore a band shirt or anything. You was pretty much automatically kind of like the black sheep at school. And uh, I couldn't count how many times I've been in the principal's office over band shirts I've had. <laughs> really? Are you kidding me? That's crazy. Like, I'm from, yeah. like, in California, like, there, we had a whole group of people that were, like, the skater, punk rock, metalhead, 
kind of kids, but, you know, there was also my high school, I forgot how many students we had, we had a shit ton of students, so I think my graduating class was like 400 something, so, we had a whole diversity of people, but you hear these smaller towns, and especially with the school shootings, you got the rock and roll kids, and you're like, you know, the ones that, but then, I will say this, there was, in my high school, there was like the rock and, like the kids that listen to goth music that weren't cool, but then there was the kids yeah. that listened to like, you know, Limp Biscuit. And those yeah. guys were pretty cool. Those guys were pretty cool. You know, they were the more popular kids. The ones that weren't listening I, I was, to Maryland. I was that guy. I listened to Limp Biscuit. But my yeah. friends at, at our school of kids didn't like that. Like, seriously, it, it's crazy to think about it. But the reality of it was, like, if you didn't listen to country or pop music, just normal stuff that was on the radio in this area, you're the odd man out. People think you're crazy. Uh, like, our friends, even people that we know that, you know, maybe don't like the kind of music we play or whatever, but just want to support us to be friends. That's like the one thing we always hear is, you know, I, I really like what you guys play and it sounds good. I just cannot understand what these people are saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be honest, I have a hard time hearing what you're saying too, but that's because I, got, but, when, but once I go to the lyric video or like the lyrics, if there's like a lyric part to it, you hear it one time, but that's like with any, Almost any song that's not pop, it's kind of hard to understand exactly what they're saying during the song, especially okay, yeah. especially if they're screaming it, you know? Yeah, and I think that, you know, learning to dissect screaming vocals by ear is probably an acquired taste, but uh, yeah. I picked up on it early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, and if I listen to a bunch of, because you guys, I, like I said, I think I said on the last podcast we did it, I'm not really a big, huge, like, heavy metal metal, but if it sounds good, it sounds good, like... You guys sound good. There's another band called Amnesis. They kind of have a really heavy sound. I like them. Then the metalcore band Begotten. Those are super cool dudes also. And but I, I like Slipknot type sounds also. You know, I just don't really I don't like that death, dark, deep, growly. Not that it's bad. I'm just saying I don't prefer it. Uh, I was guilty. I was the death metal guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, li listening to music with Brandon is where I learned how to tune out vocals and listen to just the music. Because every, everything he listened to was, was some sort of death metal growl. And back then, I like I like Limp Biscuit, man. Like, if it was hard to understand, it's because it was fast lyrics. But yeah, back when I was in school, really, it was like you didn't really hear a lot of death core bands back then. It was either metal or death metal or black. Yeah, Death, yeah, Death yeah. Core really blew up past our experience in high yeah. school. <laughs> that, so, was, that was when I was in high school. So, okay. When Death Core started blowing up. So, I graduated in 2001, all right? And that was right before, and I was a drummer, you know, and I was, and I consider myself like a late 90s drummer, and I've stuck with that same style, like, my whole life. Like, I've never progressed past that. So, when people started introducing the double kick and shit, I was like, nah, fuck that. I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> Uh, it, I like to play that kind of stuff. Like, like the way that uh, I was in a band before, I'm not going to say the name of the band, but I was in a band before that like regionally did okay. And it was more of like a hard rock, new metal sort of band. And we didn't do a whole lot of crazy drum stuff. But the one thing I've always really liked about being in what drives the week is like, as musicians, we all push each other as hard as we can. Like I, I didn't come into this band knowing how to do a lot of the stuff that I can do now. And I've learned it by, pushing each other to do it like jordan will come up with a guitar riff and i'll say hey dude what do you think would sound good here and if he says oh i think it should sound like like that's <laughs> what I, I just try to make it happen to the best i can and it's uh it's helped all of us man everybody in this band like you were asking about how the sound has changed everybody in this band has become a better musician from being in this band right so we we try to like make ourselves uncomfortable uh, as much as possible when writing because like the best music in, in our experience always comes from when you're outside of the box that you normally live in. And, and, it's, and it's easier to experiment and step outside of the box when you're with people that you know and that you've yeah. played music with for a while. It makes it easier to do that, you know, because I was in the band. Our, our, I'll say the name was called Cricket was the name of our band. Uh, I definitely became a better drummer. I had that band stuck together. We broke up like in 2003 or 2004, something like that. Had we mm. have stuck together and been together this long, uh, obviously I probably would have learned double kick by now and been really, really good at it. <laughs> but right. I got to put the sticks down to, at that point, you know? Well, it's double kick's fun, but man, sometimes like at the end of a set or something, you felt like you ran the Boston Marathon and you just want to die. Your legs turn into jelly. 
<laughs> yeah, mean, honestly, yeah. you're probably saving yourself some uh, some aches and pains. Yeah, I'll just stick to podcasting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I can just exercise <laughs> exercise my mouth. All right, that sounded kind of gay. All right, <laughs> <laughs> exercise your mouth on me, baby. All right, the song Black Phoenix. Let's play that song right now. And how old is this song? Uh, it also came out on March 13th. All the this, songs. All these got, songs came out March 13th. Yeah, everything that, that we're going to play today uh, comes from our album Lightbringer, which I'll plug that later. But uh, Lightbringer is uh, where all these songs came from. This but, is what we are last any, year. Are any of these songs older though that you brought back to this album, or they were they all written also around the same time? All new stuff. All Everything new that's stuff. on Lightbringer was was new stuff. All right, here we go, Black Phoenix. We're gonna play it right now. There you go, Black Phoenix. What drives the week? I so when you guys were talking about your writing process earlier, that was the same when I was in a band. That was my writing process, and I think, and it's it, not every band's like that. The I, I always figured the drums and the guitarist should always kind of get together and lay the foundation for the song, and then everyone else can kind of come in. But a lot of bands, 
the it's always it, a lot of bands it would be the singer and the guitar player. It's always the guitar player though. The, it's never like the singer and the drummer or the bass player.